Hey, what is going on everyone? I hope you are doing well. My name is Dylan and welcome to the channel. Now, it's been about three years or maybe more than three years since the last time I tried making video content or YouTube content in general. If you've followed me on social media or you've seen anything that I have done over the past few years, what I originally started making YouTube content for kind of revolved around techwear specifically, uh, the techwear sphere, the techwear genre of clothing, which if you are unfamiliar with techwear, it is essentially the use of performance fabrics, um, things that you would normally go running in, things that you would go hiking in, uh, outdoor apparel in general, stuff like that, but sort of reimagined with a futurist spin to give it a kind of edge, to give it some more like stylistic integrity. And so I was really drawn to this uh, aesthetically as well as just ideologically when it came to clothing. And so I decided to go down the avenue of making YouTube content surrounding tech wear clothing and sort of what it means and doing product reviews and brand discussions and all sorts of stuff like that. I ended up kind of deviating away from doing YouTube content in general because as I got further and further down the rabbit hole of this sort of hobby of learning about clothing, learning about textiles and everything like that, me as a creative person, I really wanted to take that in the direction of uh, creating clothing rather than just creating video content. And so the reason why I've been absent for the past few years as far as making content like this goes is because I was super busy going to school um, and focusing on fashion design and creating and launching my own brand, which now is online and has been launched since February of 2022, and it is called Entrem. So in this video, I kind of want to talk about the origins of Entrem and kind of the ethos surrounding it, uh, why I design the way that I do. As we get further into that uh, and sort of like the brand discussion in general, I would love to show some pieces that I've made recently that are available on the site. And in future videos, I would love to sort of explore uh, things that are to come in the future and things that I will be making and some general design ideas that I have. So to talk about the origins of Intram, we have to take this all the way back to 2019, uh, where I started sort of a social media art project called Entirely Removed. So this art project basically consisted of collaging different images together and then turning the noise up to 11, uh, making them super gritty, uh, super dark, and really like brutalistic in tonality. So I did this for a little while. It was a pretty short-lived project because at the time I was doing this uh, really interesting brutalist graphic design, I was also getting more and more into techwear clothing or clothing in general and kind of exploring uh, fabrics and exploring design in clothing in general. And upon sort of uh, realizing that I wanted to make clothes, that I wanted to learn how to design and create clothes, I ended up going to an independent fashion design school for two years, ended up graduating and then launching Entrum after all that was said and done. And so I've been running and operating Entrum for a couple years now. Uh, I mean, it's officially been out since February of last year but there was so much preliminary work that went into making this brand a possibility and I'm super excited with where it is now. So originally, whenever I first launched the brand, the idea was to do all made to order clothing, really specific sort of futurist designs that are really geometrically and architecturally inspired, whether it be from brutalism or cyberpunk in general, just taking all of these sort of really specific influences that I had and mashing them together to come out with a full collection right off the bat that I could put online and have for sale as all made to order custom clothing. And so in the process of doing this, I developed a really good relationship with a factory in New York. Uh, basically, I was doing all of the preliminary work that went into the clothing. I was doing all of the sourcing, uh, all of the sampling myself. Basically, I would take everything that I had done preliminarily and send it to my factory in New York and they would sew the final designs. 
So as you can imagine, uh, doing made to order through a factory can get pretty expensive. So the price point for my products that were on the site whenever I first launched were really high. Uh, and though I did have uh, quite a few sales within the first year, I ultimately realized that for one, it was way too expensive for the potential customer that I was trying to aim for. And for two, the profit margins on everything that I was making weren't that high. So I was essentially breaking even the entire first year that I was in business as a brand. So after taking a look at all of that, taking a look at the numbers and seeing, you know, everything that I had sold throughout the first year or so that my brand had become a reality, I realized what I needed to do was to cut out the middleman. So now I'm no longer going through a factory to make everything, but I'm proud to say that I am now doing everything from scratch myself. So I'm creating literally everything that you see on the website. Any new designs that come out on Entrum.us are all made from scratch by me by hand. With that being said, uh, what I want to do for this video is show you a few of the pieces that I have recently made that are available on the site and then we'll kind of get into uh, some other pieces that I picked up recently, what I've been wearing, and then after all that is said and done, uh, I want to show you guys maybe some music that I've been listening to recently. So hopefully you'll stick around for the rest of the video and see all of that. So first off, what I want to show so this is the Geist Overwork Jacket. So it's one of my newer designs, uh, just came out a few months ago. There's a lot of subtle detail to this design. I basically wanted to take a classic piece, like a denim jacket, and sort of rethink it with my stylistic ideas that I normally put into my clothing and sort of rethink what a denim jacket could be that could serve my sort of futurist ethos that surrounds the brand. I kind of ended up with this, the Geist Overwork jacket. So we have these really cool paneled uh, seam details on the sleeves right here. There's all sorts of asymmetrical details. So there's this asymmetrical distressing right here on the chest as well as on the bottom right, we have this distress panel right here. So we've got these two really large front welt pockets as well as two smaller chest pockets right here. So this one's a flap and also this chest piece right here with this distress panel also sort of acts as a flap. So you can lift that up to gain access to the small pocket in the front right here. Uh, we have a Riri M4 metal zipper closure. So when we open this up, then we can see that sort of like a classic Levi's denim jacket, the welt pocket from the front right here also becomes an internal pocket right here. And we have a tiny internal pocket right here on the right hand bodice as well. And that's mostly it. So this is a super cropped fit. Um, this is only available in one size on the site right now. And it is the sample size that I'm holding right here. So this kind of fits like a US extra large. However, it's super cropped. So I think it's about 23 inches uh, from pit to pit across the chest, as well as 23 inches in length. If you wanna know more about this, then look in the description below and I will link this as well as the next couple pieces that I'm going to show from my website. Okay, up next we have the Planar Architect shirt. So this is a 100% linen button down. This actually comes as part of a set. So there is a pair of shorts, a pair of linen shorts that comes with this top as well that can be purchased as a set or they can be purchased individually. So a couple of details about the Planar Architect shirt. We have double pocket in the front. So there's one regular patch pocket and then one welt pocket that you can find right above that. There's also this double layered bodice over here that's pretty much just for style. So it has this grommet detailing that you'll also see are part of the shorts that allow for the drawstring to come through in the shorts. But I really wanted to implement these grommets in the shirt as well as just a nice little design touch. And then when we turn it around to the back, we'll notice that it is also a button down back. So this can be opened from the bottom all the way up for a super flowy fit. 
it can be styled in a couple different ways. So that's something that I really like about this shirt. But yeah, it's super wide. Um, this is the sample size, which is a size one. So this comes in two different sizes on the website right now. Uh, I'll probably be grading it into more sizes, probably pretty soon into the future. That is the Planar Architect shirt. So let's take a look at the shorts. So I kind of modeled these shorts as far as the fit and the inseam length goes off of one of my favorite pairs of shorts, which are the Patagonia baggies. So these shorts right here have a five inch inseam. Uh, they're made from the same linen material as the shirt. So we have our grommet detailing right here with the drawstrings, uh, these nice little stainless steel aglets at the ends of our drawstrings. And basically what I wanted to do whenever I was making a pair of shorts is I wanted to ensure that basically the entire surface area of the shorts is usable cargo space. So not only do we have these front pockets right here that go all the way down to the hem, we also have this extra layered panel right here that acts as a huge front pocket as well. And not only is this in the front, but this is also mimicked in the back of the shorts too. So in the back of the shorts, we have these two welt pockets up top right here that are pretty deep and pretty sizable. And then right underneath that, the same detail as the front, we have this huge cargo space right here. So yeah, this sample size uh, is a size one. So this one specifically is about a 32 is where it rests. But I can basically make these in any size. Uh, all it takes is an elastic adjustment in the waistband whenever it's being sewn. So if you are interested in picking up a pair of these, please let me know your specifically desired waist size uh, at checkout or in an email and I'll be able to accommodate for sure. So that's it as far as everything new uh, from my brand. So I wanna deviate a little bit from the standard pickup style of video. And what I would like to do, because I, do, I don't really purchase clothing that much, I don't purchase new clothing or used clothing a whole lot. Really what I do is every couple months or so, I tend to find a uniform. And so what I do with my uniform is I have it at its base and I'll basically switch out maybe one thing uh, every few days or so to switch up my general look, but the uniform itself kind of stays the same. So what I would like to do is go through uh, not only a couple of recent pickups, but also a uniform breakdown. So I'll go through all of the things that I'm currently wearing and how I like to switch them out and how I like to style them. But first up, what we have as, a, as one of the most recent pickups for spring, we have this Craig Green laced collar shirt. So this isn't necessarily uh, anything new. I believe that this shirt uh, in particular came out in the fall winter 2018 collection. But yeah, I think the detail on this is super interesting. Um, it's a really nice 100% cotton shirt. Uh, this is a size large, which I actually wish was a little bit bigger on me. Yeah, I, see, I really like the lace detail, it's super interesting. So it laces around the collar and the front, as well as a couple times in the back. And so when I initially picked this up, I got this on Grailed for pretty cheap. Uh, I think maybe about 50, 60 bucks or so. Whenever I first got this, I had assumed that this was probably a piece that you could just take the lace out of and it would just leave the shirt with these few grommets that are sort of around the collar, around the neckline. But the lace is actually bar tacked into the shirt. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, so these stitches right here, these stitches basically prevent you from taking the lace out of the shirt. But it's all good. Uh, I believe that I'll still wear it quite a bit regardless. I'm really into Craig Green's work. Uh, specifically because he has a he has such a knack for creating things that are both really complex but also really simplistic at the same time and finds like this really nice harmony between the two so yeah I'm super lucky to have found this for as cheap as I did let's move on to the next piece all right so next up as part of my uniform wear for this spring this is a vintage pair of Levi's 517s that I got on Grailed for super cheap. Um, these are really interesting because unlike the standard Levi's 517s that normally have like uh, a boot cut flare at the hem, this is actually by a previous owner been cut. So there's no longer 
the flare at the hem. So it, it fits more like a relaxed pair of pants. And there's just a ton of distressing detail on here that looks really cool. Um, some slight discoloration right here in the knees. Yeah, I love the kind of wash that's on this denim. I think it looks really good. And I really needed like a beat up sort of pair of work pants essentially. Yeah, this has been great. Uh, a great pair of pants that I've incorporated into my uniform because not only do they look good when they're just laying over top of boots or whatever other shoes that I have, they also look good tucked into boots because of the relaxed fit so you get that really nice stacking effect. And next on my list for uniform wear comes this vintage Home Depot sweater that I also picked up off of Grail for super cheap. Um, this thing is huge. This thing is like a 2XL, uh, but super cozy, super comfy. I believe it's just a 50-50 uh, cotton poly blend. And I'm not exactly sure what year this is from, but I, I basically, I love vintage novelty pieces like this that have just a random business on here or just like a, from a random state that I don't quite understand why it came from there. But yeah, no, this is a really cool piece. Um, and as a homeowner myself, I go to Home Depot a lot. So I really appreciate this. But yeah, I kind of incorporate this into my uniform wear a lot, uh, especially for this spring because we've had such a mild spring. It's been really easy to layer in. Even though it's super sunny out, it hasn't exactly hit sort of like that peak of hot weather yet. So super stoked to continue wearing this for probably the next month or so. And lastly, what we have for the uniform wear, these are the Somar Grunt Boots. So these boots released uh, sometime in like late May, I think, and I was super fortunate to get a pair. I think they all sold out in under 24 hours. Yeah, right when I got my hands on these things, I immediately knew that they were gonna be great quality pair of boots. Uh, the leather feels really good. It's Turkish imported leather that uh, has already worn in really nicely. You can kind of see on the toe cap, there's a bit of, scuff marks and scratches going on, um, but these are gonna wear in so beautifully over time. So these come with both leather cut laces or waxed cotton laces. I've kept the leather ones in here uh, just because I, I really like them aesthetically. And generally the way that I style them is I wrap them around the boot and then I'll just double knot them into place to keep them nice and secure and also to keep them kind of out of the way. But yeah, super thick, chunky outsole and I love it. So it's got the Somar logo on the bottom right there. And another thing that I think that's really cool about these boots is the gusseted tongue construction. So the tongue kind of fans out a lot whenever you go to put them on. So it's kind of for ease of putting them on and taking them off. I will say that the only like negative that I've come across with these boots it does take a little bit of effort to put them on and take them off, but it's not the end of the world. Because once they're on, the way that the shaft of the boot is constructed really cups your, uh, your ankle super nicely and super securely. So uh, yeah, they're great. I got this in a size 42, which is normally my go-to size because I'm in between a size 41 and a 42. So actually, as the moment that I got these, I actually replaced the insole immediately and got something slightly thicker. So they fit like a dream now, super comfortable boots, and I'm super glad that I was able to pick up a pair of these. That about does it for the video today. Um, let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, uh, what you would like to see in the future would be super helpful. Um, I've been planning on making video content for such a long time, but it takes a lot to get me going in terms of doing stuff like this in general because it is a pretty involved process. However, I really, really want to continue doing this and sharing what I'm making with you guys, especially some of the newer designs that I have coming up in the near future for a spring and early summer release. I'm working on a new pair of overalls, which are gonna be super sick. They're gonna be loaded with utility and they're made of a great quality canvas textile. So I'm super stoked on that. And then also I have a tank top that I'm working on right now as well. That's super geometrically involved and has some really interesting panels and layers on it. Cause that's kind of my go-to design style and signature. So uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and please subscribe because you'd be helping me out a ton. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's at Intram Coder. 
And if you wanna follow the brand, it's at interim.us, which is also the link to the website. I'll include all that stuff in the description below, but thank you guys so much for watching. And I'm gonna sign off by giving you guys just a few music recommendations of stuff that I've been listening to recently, and I hope that you'll enjoy it as well. Thanks everyone, till next time, peace. Yeah.